Alrighty everyone, here is my first ever get ready with me video while I also voice over a movie review leading up to Halloween, my favorite, pretty much favorite holiday and Valentine's Day. So this weekend, I on that Saturday, this past Saturday, watched the first original Saw movie. Um, and that is the movie I'm going to be doing a review on, so bear with me. I'm still kind of new to this. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this video type. If you would rather see me talking about the movie, if you like the get ready with me aspect of it. I like to do get ready with me just because I am in the beauty field and industry, and I like to share my knowledge with that while also sharing some blips and parts of my personality. So going into the movie review saw which originally was released on october 29th 2004 with a running time of about 103 minutes the box office hit 103.9 million and it really did kind of shape the way horror went after that before saw everything was slasher this and slasher that and as i love that or paranormal things sort of at that time but the side sort of psychological thriller aspect and twist that saw became as well as the gore aspect of it nothing like that had really existed up until that point which is why that movie is so important and such a pivotal movie to watch um, cause everyone will remember the first time they watch that movie and they really see that first twist and how it goes. So before I get into this as well, just please know this is a spoiler filled review. So please, if you have not seen Saw, but like, how could you not? It's been out for over 10 years, but if you have not seen the original Saw and you don't want it to get spoiled, please click away. Otherwise, you've been warned, it's not my fault. So, going in, it was the most proper, profitable horror film since Scream in 1996, so almost a decade prior to. And again, slashers, very different, just because this was more of a psychological thriller. It starts off, we see Adam waking up in the bathtub, which <laughs> I need to get into in a minute just because bathtubs and bathrooms especially, it's creepy bathrooms, I have not a fear of, I mean it is a cleanliness issue, I do have slight OCD, so cleanliness does kind of become a problem with me, but mainly it's just the way bathrooms always go in horror films they i really just tie the two together like i feel like i'm going to die in a bathroom for whatever reason or people get murdered in bathrooms like it's just not a very pleasant place for me if i go to halloween haunt which i do every year and there's a bathroom scene in a maze i will cringe and that is the one that i'm trying to get out of uh evil babies evil monsters vampires i'm fine with all of those no it's the bathroom that really freaks me out so of course watching this for the first time um i was freaking out at that aspect of it just because this would be literally the idea of my worst nightmare would be waking up in this bathroom just as we see adam in that disgusting bathtub it's just it's a cringe it's such a cringe so you have adam waking up in bathtub he is hooked by his ankles to the wall and then you see oncologist lawrence um, on the opposite side of the room in a corner kind of just sitting there also in chains and they realize they're trapped they don't know what's going on they're trying to look for any clues that they can you will notice in a lot of the flashbacks mainly lawrence's flashbacks that you would not notice the first time ever watching the movie however the second time you'll pick up that you actually see the real jigsaw revealed as well as spoiler alert the false who you think is behind everything at the the way the movie goes and so you see lawrence he's an oncologist talking to a patient named john who in fact is jigsaw um and you'll later find out about the whole how he has cancer he's the doctor who tells him all of that 
Um, and you also see the guy who Lawrence works with who will later go kidnap Lawrence's family, threaten to kill them and him if he doesn't abide by the rules, basically. Um, so just an interesting little kind of Easter egg, if no one has ever noticed before, that the original Jigsaw is in there. And I just love that he, the whole... Everything in Saw is always so in your face, but then when everything is turned and you really see when the cards come down what is going on it's just kind of one of those how did you not even think it but that's the point of these movies and the point of Jigsaw is that he plays off of basically the stupidity (laughs) and the normal human emotions that people have he plays off of that and at the end of the day he wants to play God essentially and give life to those who are willing and take it away from those who aren't grateful for it. In one of the other flashbacks you are introduced to this character Amanda who at first you see as a survivor, a victim, someone who was one of Jigsaw's first victims that he played his game with Um, And in her story, you really see what the game was and how all of his games are rigged for the most part. And you just assume until her character that all of his games are rigged for you to fail, which some are. But she did choose life and would do whatever it was to get out of that situation. And she actually walked away from it. And that's how she was a survivor of the torture. Um, I really liked how they continued her character, especially in the second and even third one, even though I don't really like what happens to her in the third one, because I think she was a really good character that had a lot of potential, and spoiler alert, she pretty much becomes what you think is his prodigy, but now as I'm continuing to watch more and more movies this week, I'm realizing, oh, that's not the case. Great. (laughs) Jigsaw... And just his presentation in general with the tapes. One, one, first of all, his voice is phenomenal for the part. He really gets you into that horror-esque, scared, like he really has a villain voice. And then the tapes is just genius, especially considering the time. This is 2004. We obviously are in the age of CDs, but slowly getting into digital streaming, iPods, music, such as that. So tapes were something of the past but for him especially him being an older character the tape just gives it a really nice aesthetic and a nice little touch that makes it something that is his own that not everyone else is going to be using like why would you find a random cassette tape just laying around anywhere talking to you giving you directions I really like how that is used as well as I love the jigsaw puppet everything about him part of me wishes that it makes sense that it's a puppet and then he never dressed up as jigsaw but when i was naive and didn't watch the movie yet i always really loved the look and aesthetic of jigsaw even though it was just a puppet it wasn't really him and part of me always thought it was him but like you know michael myers or jason but kind of happy it didn't go that route for obvious reasons is the puppet is just so much more threatening and also cute and I like his little laugh and if he talked that might ruin it for me going into the best part of the movie and the climax of it we get to Lawrence basically knowing that he needs to escape out of there realizing as he already did earlier in the movie that the saws that were left for them were not meant for them to saw off their chains or anything like that, but they're meant to saw off your limbs and your legs in order to get out of that chain. And it definitely just builds the climax so well when he goes to, I think he shoots Adam in the shoulder at that point because he knows he just needs to get out of there and he's willing to do whatever it takes. And with that, I'm not even sure if he knows that he's dead or just tries to kind of um, stabilize him. Yeah, that's what it, he, I'm pretty sure he tries to stabilize him, and then he knows he's got to get out there to save his family, and he just loses it, grabs the saw, and l- just starts chopping away at his leg, and it, you're just watching it. You're like, oh my gosh, he is doing that. I mean, hence saw, you know. 
Um, and the music, the build up, everything is just so great leading into the twist ending, which is probably one of the greatest things. If it wasn't for the twist in the original movie, it would never have been one received as well as it was and two taken so seriously as an actual horror film because like yes with the later songs especially it did just become like a gore porn type of thing and the plot did definitely suffer because of it there were still a few good plot twists but nothing's ever gonna outdo that first one where it's just you think the whole movie it's been set up that it's that one guy who worked with Lawrence at the hospital the one you see abducting the family going to kill him all of that stuff but no You then see him run in, Adam shoots him, and then he sees the tape, and he hears his cassette tape and realizes that, no, that guy is not the one behind this. He is another victim. There is someone else watching them in charge of all of these things, masterminding, kind of being the puppeteer for this whole show, basically. And that's when you see the guy in the middle who's been there from the beginning, who you thought was just some guy who blew his brains out that they were sitting in there with. And you see him get up, reveals, no, he is Jigsaw. He has been in the room with them the whole time. And then, you know, obviously he freaks out and tries to kill him. And that's when Jigsaw, John, is just kind of like, no, I want people who want to live, like, I I fight for those who want to live, you have to play the game, here are the rules, and then he just goes game over once he tries to shoot him, and shuts the door, and just the whole, the idea of the game in Saw is really just great, it's a great aspect, it's something very memorable, something that, like, you're always gonna hear on, like, those top countdowns and things like that, like, it's just such an iconic movie signature and for it it to have not been used at that point because all these movies have their different like slogans and things like that um want to watch a scary movie or what's your favorite scary movie like stuff like that but the whole aspect of a game and pretty much the point of all saw movies is i'm gonna put you in this like screwed up scenario and you can either like literally saw your leg off Or kill this other guy in order to get out. But, like, either way, you're going to have to sacrifice something here in order to live. And I just love the concept of it. I love the twist. I love Jigsaw and how genius he is. Because literally, even after the first movie, because he knows he's going to die. That's the point of all of this, is that he wants people to fight for death, as or for life, as much as he is. Because he sees the joy in life and is willing to do anything he can to live and he's basically orchestrating these just to teach people especially people that are junkies people who hate their lives or have done something wrong he is using this to manipulate them and tell them like no you've got to make your choices here we all have got to make our sacrifices in order to live because i have been doing everything right, quote-unquote, in my head, and I'm still dying, so, like, why the heck, if I'm gonna die, you better, and you're living, like, no, you're coming down with me, and I just love every move he has, he has it orchestrated just right, so that as the game goes on, he already has predicted the moves, but he's also got backups for everything, like, there's always... Like, you're never going to beat this guy. You're never going to... Even going further on into when he dies in the third one, he's still continuing his legacy just because of the impact and mastermind that he was. He is one of the most threatening villains of our time. And it's just going to be hard for any other sort of movie villain after that. And it has been. for, In my opinion, I can't really think of any other horror films since Saw that have really fit that and filled that place. I've liked it a couple, but there's no villain quite as great as the mastermind that is Jigsaw. And so I recommend always, if you haven't watched it, and you're listening, and you know the spoilers anyway, you should watch it. Give it a go. It is... You won't be sorry. I'm actually surprised it took me so long in my life to watch it. It was one of these... So horror films for me... I started watching with my brother in high school, and we would do it, like, every Saturday and stuff. 
But with that, those were like the classic slasher movies, like Halloween, um, Friday the 13th, movies like of that realm, even Carrie. But I never got into Saw until about four years ago. I was just randomly going through Halloween times, trying to like get ready in the spirit, and was like, oh, I've never watched this. It's a classic. People always talk about it. I'll just go with it. And I was so surprised and disappointed that I had waited so long because it's just such a classic. The music's phenomenal. The score, I am a score person and a Halloween music fanatic, so anything like that I can get my hands on, I do, and it's just built so beautifully and so perfectly that you would not think it was almost from that movie, just because that movie and that score sound very, they ma- they make sense, but it's just, it's more memorable than what I think I saw Saw as on the outside as a kid, especially as they kept making more and more, and they just kept going more and more into the gore aspect of things and less on the plot. I think Saw got a really bad name for a very long time, even though when you take a step back and you look at just that first movie alone, it is still a classic and can still hold up. And I think the other movies coming out the way they did really dampened what a good thing was and made everyone forget just how good it was. So, with all of that said, I really enjoy all of y'all listening to this first ever movie review, and again, let me know what you think about this in the comments, let me know if you would rather see me going through it, and then we figure out a get ready with me or something like that, just because, as I've said, I really like to continue to do, like, hair and beauty related things on this channel considering I am a cosmetologist. I work here in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm always happy to help anyone in the surrounding areas, not just here, but just throughout the country or even across the world globally if anyone's watching this. Any way I can help anyone with their hair, I would love to do. This video is more of just a basic rundown of my morning routine, starting with everything between taking my pills, my allergy medicine, my Flonase, my face lotion, all of that, putting on my makeup, the brands I use, how I curl my hair if I'm just doing some normal fast curls, getting ready for work. Um, and then this outfit that I will be showing at the very, very end of the video is actually a jumpsuit that I believe I got off of Amazon, I think, just because I love Amazon's clothing. It's really easy. You can always read their reviews, get really, really great stuff that way. Um, everything I have written in the little corners here so you shouldn't have a problem grabbing any of the names of things and if I've forgotten anything just leave a comment or question in the bottom below sorry I ran out of stuff to say and this video is still going so with all that said if you've not subscribed to my channel please go ahead and do so and you can always select that bell notification so you will be notified whenever I post videos of me doing hair makeup movie reviews rambling on because I don't know how to fill the time and <laughs> how to be entertaining. Um, anyone who lives in the local Virginia area, this actually tonight for me is the first night of uh, King's Dominion's Halloween Haunt, and I will have everyone know I typically go to it every single weekend throughout all of the end of September going into October. So if you do live in the local um 23116 area or just 804 area in general, please feel free, hit me up. I would love to see you out and about. And with all that said, loves, I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you on next week's video duo and spooky day.